Welcome to Allie's Attic Show, where you never know what kind of surprise you'll find in my attic. I'm your host, Allie, and today my surprise is a beautiful woman that has been on my show before. She has a heart of gold, um, a voice of an angel. I cannot say enough about her because I absolutely, absolutely adore her. Please welcome Christian pop artist, songwriter, Danielle Haskell. Hello, Danielle. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming back. I mean, I love the new I love the new songs, but I obviously one I'm in total love with. So we'll talk about all of that. Now, I mean, I know all about you, but maybe just kind of remind everybody like when you started this journey right up to now, like cuz you started when you were 3. Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> I was I used to do these shows when I was 3. My grandparents had built me a stage and they gave me these little curtains and I would like put pants on my head and like multiple layers of clothes and I was saying I put your picture away I had that whole song memorized <laughs> and, and I had started learning piano actually at the age of three too and then around six years old I learned to play the guitar so music's kind of always been a part of my life and I never really took it seriously, though. I always just kind of did it for fun. And then around, I think it was probably near my freshman year of high school, I had been at that point kind of taking lessons on and off. And then I took a break for a while just because it was like a hobby, you know? It mm-hmm. was just something to do, something to know how to play an instrument with fun. And so around... A year later or so, when I had finally just kind of called it quit, I get a call, and it says, hey, do you still sing? And I was like, oh, uh, yeah, I guess so, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of what started everything. I had a lot of interviews and stuff, and then someone set me up with a whole team, like a co-writer and all these things, and I kept thinking, how is this happening? <laughs> how is this happening to me? Because this has always just been like a hobby, you know? It was never anything I took seriously. Mm -hmm. And then I wrote New Day with my co-writer, and I was, like, mind-blown because I had never written a song, like, professionally before. And I also didn't know what my voice sounded like when I recorded professionally. Sure, I had taken videos and recorded myself before, but nothing, like, professional in a nice studio, you know? (laughs) And it was like, wow, when I heard it playing, I said, wow, there's something to this. Yeah. I think I could actually do it. <laughs> well, you do it very well. <laughs> now, oh, thank you so much. Okay, so talk about, you started recording and doing all kinds of beautiful things, and um, you decided that Christian pop was the way you wanted to go, and talk about your first song new day because i love i love the stories behind your songs danielle i absolutely love them but talk about new day oh thank you um so basically my first song new day i had no idea what to write about i had never met my co-writer and he's someone who's very close with me now but i was terrified (laughs) you know i had been told you know write down your ideas in a notebook and and i had some words written down and I had a general idea of where I wanted to go but I had no idea if that was a good idea or I had no clue about anything really and I showed up there and I said something about a blank page and that I wanted it to be all about starting fresh and starting over because this was a whole new chapter for me Mm -hmm. and I had just gone through a pretty hard time I had been pretty pretty bullied (laughs) and I really struggled with it I really did I was I felt very alone I had skipped a grade so I didn't have any friends at the school that I had skipped a grade into they were all a year older than me so I didn't know any of them or I kind of vaguely knew a couple of people but not really Mm -hmm. and I just felt very alone and I really struggled like I went from a straight-A student to like really bad grades (laughs) and I just couldn't get a grip I really couldn't and I finally just said enough is enough because there was just this one day where my mom had threatened to take away my phone and I never she never ever had threatened to take away anything so I knew that this was like a big deal because she knew that I was not doing my homework because I was so worried about Twitter and what were people saying and all this stuff and she threatened to take my phone and I gave it to her and I started handing her all my stuff and I said you can take everything I have because I have nothing Aww. And when I said that, I was just like, whoa, <laughs> it hit me and how low I had gone. Yeah. And 
and it was just like this point of I really need to either get it together. I can't just stay like this. You know, I really need to pull myself together. It was the first time I had really realized it. And, yeah, and just from then on, I decided to be more confident. I never said anything to people. So any of the rumors they assumed were true because I was too shy to go, hey, those are not. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was just scared. And so I finally stopped being scared, and I just spoke up for myself. And I actually ended up friends with, like, all of them. And they ended up really all nice to me after that. They said, you know, we were really wrong about you. So it was a really, like, interesting experience. Not many people have that, where people who <laughs> made them feel pretty bad about themselves say, you know what, we were wrong about you. And I wanted to write a song for that and also the start of my music. You know, it's just all about new chapters. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't believe that you were bullied. And thank God you found your voice. Um, not just with singing, but also to stand up for yourself because I bullies just, I, ugh, I don't even, I'm, we're not going to get into it cause I could go on and on and on. I have two grandkids. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> now let's talk about, now this brings tears to my eyes. Um, your grandfather, um, he had Alzheimer's and you were the only one he remembered, um, throughout it all. Yeah. And he was the inspiration for your second song forget. Yeah. Yeah. I actually um, was supposed to write a different song. I don't even remember what the idea was, but I was not happy about it. I just, I remember sitting in my basement for days just trying to come up with a topic that I could do my song on, and I had no clue. And I had kind of thought, well, I guess I could do that, but I was so disappointed because I knew I wanted something more than that and something, like, more meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. And um, I was in Nashville, actually, about to write my song. And a couple days before, my, because I had gotten there a little early, I got a call that my grandfather had fallen and hit his head. Oh. And, of course, I freaked out. Yeah. <laughs> and I flew home. And when I got home, my family looked at me and said, you know, don't expect much. I know he's remembered you, but don't expect for him to be able to remember you now. You know, he's fallen, he's hit his head, he's pretty out of it. Mm -hmm. And I was so scared. I remember my heart just sunk. And it was because I knew that moment would come, mm -hmm. but I just wasn't, it was now, you know? There's just no preparing. It was just now. Yeah. And I walked in, and he looked at me, and he goes, Danny, you're here. <laughs> and I felt kind of, ooh, you know, I felt kind of almost like silly. I had just been freaking out, and here he is just like, hey, Danny, you're here. Oh, my goodness. And um, I, I felt so much relief, and then I thought about how that could mean something for other people. I know a lot of people are affected by Alzheimer's, but a lot of people also just feel like they've been forgotten. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to write a song for that. And whether it's religious or just in life, you know, some people just feel that they've been forgotten, and I wanted to remind everyone that there's always someone there for us and that we're not forgotten and it was really important to me and it was like it hit me the second that happened I said this is what I'm writing my song about it was like meant it was meant for that moment everything lined up it was meant for that and it was incredible we wrote it in half an hour and it I loved how it turned out Wow, so do I. Now, it also went to number two on the top 40 international Christian music in English for the week of July 17th, 2017. Just so everybody knows, not only was it the right song at the right time and probably helped you through that dark period, um, it helps a lot of other people get through dark periods because it does make you realize that, you know, you're not alone. Um, and like you say, whether you, you know, it's God or your friends or your family or whoever you're not, you're never alone. Um, so it, it did amazingly well for you in all kinds of different aspects. Um, now <laughs> this, you know what you make me say, <laughs> you don't make me sad. You, you, your songs are so emotional and they mean something always. And I think that is the best part of being a songwriter is that you can capture those feelings and the great, great songwriters like you do it really, really well. And that's what you did with always with you. And Thank that you was so for much. your, your grandma. Yes. That song was another moment where it was like, it all lined up. I, my grandmother had not been feeling well 
and she asked me, I was going to Canada with a friend, just as like a fun trip, and um, she had asked me to go in a church and light a candle for her, because she had been having really bad hip pain, and you know, older people sometimes they have hip pain, so we never really thought anything of it, uh, she just said, please light a candle for me, and uh, a couple weeks later, she was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer, Jeez. and... When I had been in that church to light that candle, I looked through the window, and I just, something told me, you need to go in that store. I could see a store across the street. And I said to my friend, I got to go in that store. She looked at me kind of weird, and I was like, okay, fine, sure, <laughs> we can go in the store. So we go in the store, and I bought my grandmother a ring, and I bought my mom a necklace, and then we were starting to leave, and I something told me, go back to the cash register. And it was the weirdest experience. I've never had anything like that. And I was just kind of walked back up to the cash register. And was, I didn't really know what I was doing. And then I saw these little stones. And they had angels on them. And I flipped it over on the back. And there were different sayings in French. And I grabbed one of them. And I said, toujours avec toi. And I said, what does this mean? And he said, it means always with you. And I said, wow, I should get that from my grandmother. So I grabbed it, not really knowing that there would be too much meaning behind it. I just thought she would appreciate it. Something from Canada is nice. It's mm -hmm. always with you. We'll always be together. Mm -hmm. And then she got diagnosed with the cancer, and it became a huge meaning for us. She actually got me a necklace with that um, engraved into it, and it said love, meme, and stuff. And it was something that was really important to help her and I get through it, you know, it was a yeah. struggle to watch her like that, mm -hmm. and it was also a struggle for her, you know, and it really helped us get through that, and I said, I need to write a song about this, you know, it was just uh, meant to be, well, and she was the I, first one to hear it, too. I miss her every day, yeah. and that song always helps me bring her closer to me, I can feel it every time I hear the song, so it's very near and dear to my heart. I guess, and she was the first one to hear it, too, right? She didn't get to um, hear me sing it. Oh, okay. Uh, but she did know that I was writing her a song, okay. and I, she got to hear, like, the words to it, but not me singing it. Okay. And unfortunately... But I believe we've heard it now. So. Yeah, exactly. I Definitely she has. And she lost her battle with cancer, unfortunately, on your 17th birthday in, um, in April. Yeah. Now... It was also released September 2016. It was a number one hit on the top 30 international inspirational Christian music in English from June 5th to June 27th, 2017. And regardless, I mean, it's it's great that you're getting accolades and, you know, your songs are climbing the charts, but the meanings behind them, I think, mean more to me, <laughs> if that even makes any sense, because I didn't write them and I don't sing them, obviously, but your songs just, they just capture you. And I mean, you could be number one billboard chart, like you could be a huge, 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 huge star, which you're going to be, by the way. Um, and, <laughs> and every song that you released, because you put so much of you into it, you would be timeless. You wouldn't be, you know, a one hit wonder or, you know, do you know what I'm saying? I don't even know if I'm articulating this the right way, but no, I, I understand. And I really appreciate that. It means a lot. To yeah. Me, it does. I've never just... done this to be famous or anything like that. Like I said, I just thought it was a hobby. And then I thought, Oh, well that was cool. I made a song. Yeah. <laughs> you know? and, then, and then I realized how many people were touched by that. And I saw that I could do that. And help people through things and it was really important to me so I really appreciate your comments about that because that's the most important part and that's why I do this. Yes exactly and that's the point I was trying to get to because yeah you're not doing this to become like you know this huge famous you're doing it because it's coming from your heart and you can hear that and now we're going to talk about the song that was released March 23rd 2018. It is one of my favorite songs. It is a beautiful, beautiful song, and um, it's dedicated to your mom, as well as all your fans, radio stations, and everybody who's been involved in your music. So talk about Breath. Breath, I have been really excited from day one about, I kind of had an idea for a long time that I wanted to write a song about this, but I just didn't really know exactly what concept I wanted to go with. And I went on a trip to Myrtle Beach, and there was a storm, and I was just watching the waves, and they were just crazy. I was sitting on the beach, and the waves were crashing, and it was just, the waves were, like, 
some of the highest waves I had seen. And I was watching that, and I thought back to a story my mom had told me. Uh, she actually was at the beach uh, when she was young, and she got stuck under the wave. Oh. And I think she told me the story to scare me. <laughs> I think it was true, but I'm sure she told me that. And she'd always say, don't go too far in the ocean, you know, because I got stuck under and it terrified me. It really did. So that story really stuck with me. <laughs> um, so I'm watching that. I'm watching the waves and I was thinking about my mom's story. And she had told me that she got stuck under the water. And she was just fighting and fighting and fighting until she didn't know where she was anymore. And she thought she was just lost at sea. And she thought this is it. She finally gave up fighting. And then she washed up to shore when she had finally given up. And I thought about the struggle and stuff when she's talking about the waves and the struggle of everything. And I thought about my life and how many times my mom's been that person to lift me up when I've just kind of given up. You know, as I talked about my freshman year, it did not go very well for me. Yeah, yeah. And I had just kind of given up. And she was always there pushing me to to get back up again and to help me back up again. And I thought about my music and I thought about how I just thought, oh, well, I'll do this song. But I didn't even tell any of my friends until I just, I just posted it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I just didn't expect much from it, I guess. I, di I just didn't expect so much support. And through all the support, I've just felt everyone lift me up and help me through all these things. It's like, the least I can do is help people back. And it's like the amazing support that I've gotten, I'd love to give some of that back. You know, people like you who let me, like, give me an outlet, you know, and support me. And I just appreciate it so much. So I wanted to write a song for that. Well, and you did. <laughs> Um, it's a beautiful, <laughs> it's a beautiful song. Um, the first time I listened to it, I was like, oh my goodness, this is going to go far because it's just, it's a gorgeous song. And it also, it talks about your faith and how it's played a strong role in your life. Because I mean, like when you were in high school, you, uh, spent time volunteering at Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and you spoke up against bullying. Um, and I think finding your voice was the biggest, biggest battle that you probably had. And you've done it so eloquently. It's just beautiful. And, and Breathe does. Thank you so much. It does. It lifts you up. Now, let's talk about your animals. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had a feeling we were going to talk about <laughs> I could. You know what? If I could do what you do, I would. I'd have my own humane society in my backyard. I swear. <laughs> so, okay. So, how many cats and dogs do you have now? Okay, so, well, so growing up, I was very um, <laughs> persuasive kid when it came to pets. Um, I, my parents had actually um, had a divorce, and, um, and it had been quite some time, and my mom actually met her high school sweetheart. They had both been divorced and reunited, and um, when they reunited, um, he, I had told him because he was doing yard work, you know, he's coming over and helping around the house and things like that. And I had told him, I had noticed that he seemed to like my mom. And I told him, mom won't let me get these two cats because she doesn't want me to clean the litter box because I was like six. <laughs> and, um, and she knew I just probably wouldn't be too good at that. <laughs> and she didn't want to clean the litter box. And I said, you know, if you get these two cats, you can come to my house every day and clean the litter box. <laughs> And, <laughs> which is a funny story we always laugh about, and he got me the two cats. <laughs> and um, so then, <laughs> um, a few years later, uh, there was this little cat, a uh, little black cat, white spot on him, and I just thought he was the cutest thing, and then um, we got that cat. And then <laughs> um, I raised, my, instead of getting presents for my birthday one year, I did stuff for the Humane Society instead, like you bring gifts as gifts to the Humane Society, and um, when we did that, I brought the stuff into the Humane Society, and of course, when I'm in the Humane Society, I gotta look at the pets, so <laughs> I sat there with two cats, and we came home with two more cats, <laughs> so then I had five cats, um, and then unfortunately, one got hit by a car and passed away, so I have four cats, and then I got my dog, Cammy, and she's a very funny, she's got permanent underbite. We've got no idea what kind of dog she is. <laughs> she's very cute. She's just very funny looking. And um, so then I moved to North Carolina. And my mom kept the four cats and the dog. And then um, I moved here and I was feeling like I need some pets <laughs> because I just love animals. 
And I said, I'll just go look. <laughs> Whenever I say that, I'm always coming home with a cat. <laughs> and and um, there was this one cat that they said um, that was the only one there that you can't hold because he hissed and like tried to bite someone or something. And I was petting him, and he just crawled out right onto me and just like laid on my chest. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, I'm taking this cat home. And then I just, the past year, I've had him for a year, and the past year I've just kept thinking about how much he loves other cats. And so I went to, I went back just to look, <laughs> <laughs> and I found this cat that had no tail and had ear infection so bad when it had come in that its ears were bleeding. Oh. Um, his name is Bobcat, and he had like gone through a lot. He had. Uh, he was covered in fleas. Um, the owners had returned him because they threw him in with, they adopted him as a stray. They put him with eight cats and didn't introduce them at all. They just threw him in there and he started going to the bathroom everywhere because he was scared. And he got returned covered in fleas with ear infection, ears bleeding. Now he has chronic ear infections. He's got no tail. So I said, okay, I got to take that again. Aww. And now we'll see what's friend. So I have Oakley and Bobcat here, and then Cammy comes to visit like every month. <laughs> nice. With my mom. Good. Now you're originally from Maine, from the state of Maine. Now yes. you've re- you've moved where I would love to live. You're living in the Blue Ridge Mountains <laughs> in yes. Western North Carolina. Yes. I want to see those yes, one day. Yes, I live in Asheville, North Carolina. Oh, wow, unbelievable. And you're just a few hours away from Nashville. And we were talking before we started the interviews. These CMAs are June 10th to this, I can't remember now. No, June 7th to the 10th this year in Nashville. And I want to go so badly. Um, and I was saying, you know, it'd be so cool if I could go and you would be there and, you know, we could actually meet in person. So I'm, I'm yeah, crossing, yeah, <laughs> me too. I'm crossing my fingers. That happens now while you're living there, you're um, participating in the walk to end Alzheimer's and you join local organizing committees for the walk. You also work part time at an Alzheimer's residence doing activities with those people who, who actually live there. And, um, you're just, you you're doing so much. You also um, help obtain donations for children who may not have otherwise had a Christmas. And like all the things that you do, Danielle, are just a testament to the beautiful person you are inside and out. I just, your heart captured me the first time I interviewed you and you, you've had, you have my heart for probably ever. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. And I just, I just, I just think it's beautiful that even though you're as gifted as you are and, you know, you have these amazing songs and you can write songs that mean so much to everybody, not just you, you also give all your time to help as many other people as you can. And to me, that is something that is a gift that some people are blessed with and you definitely are. And um, I just, I want you to have the most success in the world and I want you like I seriously want to meet you. <laughs> I'm going I to find you. Too. I, know. We can work that out. I know we're going to work that out somehow. Now, as for your career, um, you're continuing to write and record songs, um, and you're also pursuing a future career that combines music and business to hopefully continue to make a difference in the lives of others. Yeah, definitely, definitely, because I think that helps continue, and also the more you know about music business when you're kind of in the business as an artist, the better you can succeed, and I definitely think that it's important to kind of have knowledge on both sides. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, that's a great idea, and I mean, even if for some reason you stop singing, at least you're still involved in it, because it's obviously your passion. Exactly, yeah. 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 Well, I want to say thank you so much for spreading joy through your songs and providing messages that mean so much, especially in the world today, right now. We need artists like you who write to uplift and to remind us that, you know, we aren't alone. And even when it's, you know, dark times, there's always light. And I just think it's beautiful the way you do it. So I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. We are going to hear Breath and we are going to hear Always With You. 
Those are the two songs that will be up on my website. Also, Danielle's website will be on my website, daniellevhaskell.com. You can just click on it and it'll go right to hers. You can find out all kinds of stuff about her as well as listen to a whole bunch of her songs. And I urge you to. <laughs> and um, Danielle, having you on is so much fun. I love having you on. So thank you so much for coming back. And you know, anytime, you're always welcome back. Oh, well, thank you so much. I love being here. So I appreciate you. And thank you a lot. Aw. And thank you for joining me on Allie's Attic Show. I'm getting teary, so I'm going to end this. <laughs> um, keep, oh. <laughs> keep checking my website because you never know what kind of surprises you'll find in my attic. Cheers.